Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. It's been a little while since I've done an episode, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, things have been fairly busy at my end, but I am here today with a nice quick episode about the metrics of a tunnel boring machine. I've always wanted to explore, is it actually viable to run a tunnel boring machine purely on batteries with a very small uh, grid connection, rather than the current situation we're in at the moment where most TBMs in the world are powered via a large uh, high voltage grid connection. So let's get into it. Okay. Okay, so TBMs are very power hungry machines, hence, why, as to date, there hasn't been a battery-powered TBM. Even the very small kind of micro-bore TBMs are generally either powered via grid connection or possibly uh, a diesel generator. So what actually does a TBM do that consumes all that power? So the cutter head and cutter discs and blades grind up the strata. That is kind of the most power-intensive operation that the TBM conducts. So that is eating away all that power and you're grinding up that rock and you're having to break that rock off the face of the excavation and then crunch it down actually in the excavation chamber number two multiple four cylinders progress the machine forwards so you have you know 12 14 18 20 sometimes thrust cylinders and they are pushing the machine forward they are electrically powered hydraulic units uh, the screw conveyor extracts spoil from the excavation face. Again, you know, there's quite a lot of power required to remove all that spoil. You're talking, you know, dozens and dozens of uh, cubic meters of spoil that's being removed every day, uh, if not every hour, probably. The erector assembles multiple concrete segments into the ring beam. So obviously that erector is having to lift up a large concrete segment that can weigh anything from three, four, maybe even five tons, maybe higher than that. So again, that requires a lot of power. Grout is then pumped at high pressures into the annular behind every segment. That's gonna be pumped in at a very high pressure to ensure that it fills every single void and reduces the amount of subsidence that is possible at the surface. Um, muck trains remove spoil from the tunnel. So obviously your muck trains, sometimes they're electrically powered, sometimes they're diesel, diesel powered. They obviously have to have a power source and that energy is required for the TBM's operation. So how much are we actually talking here? Because I have looked into this in the past and it's very kind of difficult to get an understanding of how much a TBM is consuming per day. And generally they're not going to give you that statistic. Uh, they're not going to give you the daily statistic or the weekly statistic or even the, the monthly statistic. It's very difficult to get hold of that kind of data. I've only come across... Uh, two or three different pieces of information regards this um, and I'm going to disclose two of them today and then we're going to come to some conclusions about how much energy I think um, proof rock is going to consume during a typical day or year. So some TBMs consume 22,900 megawatt hours to 62,000 megawatt hours per year. So you're probably looking at that and thinking wow that is quite a big difference and it's more than double it's almost triple the first number but why is that well if we look at these tbms so we have selena that's based in london at the moment that's 22,900, and we have this other machine uh, martina which is a very very big machine possibly one of the biggest in the world this is constructing um either a motorway or a dual carriageway that's why it needs to be so wide is consuming 62,000 megawatt hours per year. But really, what you need to look at is how long how long is the tunnel? What is the diameter of that tunnel? You know, what are the soil conditions like? So, it's difficult, but I think personally the best comparable metric is the kilowatt hours per cubic meter excavated. I think that is the kind of uh, baseline kind of metric that you should be using to compare these various machines. The diameter also is very, very important. The bigger the diameter, the more uh, 
spoil that's going to be excavated. Also, there's going to be more over excavation with a bigger machine like that, so you can have more wastage. Uh, so, Selena is consuming around 102 kilowatt hours, and these are big numbers. Just think that a Tesla uh, Model S uh, typically has a 100 kilowatt hour uh, battery pack. Um, so, for one cubic meter, one cubic meter of spoil. To excavate that from the face and then move it out of the, the, the machine and out of the tunnel is 102 kilowatt hours. In Martina, the TBM in Italy, we're talking 170 kilowatt hours for one cubic meter. So that is a lot, a lot of power. But these are big machines, they're doing big, uh, you know, a big itinerary of, of tasks there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's heavy, uh, you know, difficult work that these machines are doing. Ground conditions also play a major factor in energy consumption. If you are excavating through very hard, very tough ground, you know, you're going to consume more energy. If you're going through ground that's reasonably soft, maybe it's uh, kind of like cohesive soil or something that's quite spongy and reasonably easy to uh, excavate, maybe kind of like a very heavy clay or some kind of mix between uh, clay and other geologies, uh, you know, the, the energy consumption is going to be less. So it's very hard to make exact comparisons given that most TBMs are unique. So it might be that Selenium is quite inefficient, but um, because the ground conditions are more favourable, it's consuming less electricity and also the fact that the tunnel is of a lower diameter whereas martina might be a really really efficient tbm but because the diameter is so big and because obviously the ground conditions are so harsh that results in more kilowatt hours per cubic meter so that kind of gives you a good idea of what kind of power consumption these machines are going through every sort of year so proof rock we we want to get an idea approximately what proof rock is going to be consuming and whether we can actually power this with some Tesla, uh, you know, power packs or power walls or some kind of power system that's either outside the TBM or inside the TBM. Because one of the ideas that I had was you would uh, drill uh, ventilation shafts every sort of 1 to 1 1.5 miles and then you'd have your power cables go through the ventilation shafts and you'd use those ventilation shafts anyway, so you know you might as well build them. Um, and then you would have uh, containers with lots and lots of uh, power packs in them at the surface, maybe 10, you know, 12 containers full of batteries. And then you would have also a power supply to those batteries, so it would be trickle charging those batteries all the time. And then you could power your machine directly. Potentially, it could be a, a DC power machine, so direct current powered machine, uh, but it doesn't really matter too much. So power consumption of proof rock, based on those two machines that we've previously looked at, remember this is guesswork, and based on the diameter of uh, proof rock is a lot, is, is, is well is well under half of uh, Selena, uh, that previous TBM that I talked about. So it's around uh, 7,750,000 kilowatt hours. Yeah, that is a lot. That is a lot of ele electricity over the course of a year. Another thing that I've had to factor in for these particular calculations is the fact that proof rock is going to be active for more of the day. Yeah, proof rock is going to be constantly active, potentially up to 18 to 20 hours per day. It's not going to be inactive for half the day like some of these other machines. Maybe they have very, very long maintenance cycles. Who knows? But I think that proof rock will be active at least 30 to 40 percent more per day than a lot of these other machines, hence why I've, I've, I've come to this uh, number here. Power consumption per day. So it will depend upon the, the strata that you encounter. So if you're somewhere like, let's say, Miami, yeah, that limestone is reasonably soft. It's not too soft, it's just the right, you know, kind of hardness for you to go through it reasonably easy. However, if you go somewhere like uh, like Ireland, let's say Dublin, Ireland, they have a lot of granite, 
that granite is going to be very, very difficult to excavate. So I've, I've given these two numbers so I can just give you an understanding of that it is going to vary greatly between different projects. So consumption per day is 21,230 kilowatt hours. Yeah, so I'm moving around between kilowatt hours and megawatt hours here, but you know, this here is kilowatt hours. Uh, potentially that could go up to 25,200 kilowatt hours per day. That's a lot. That is an absolute ton. You know, we, we, we're talking a lot of Tesla semi trucks potentially lined up just to power one day's worth of TBM. Uh, that's a lot of electricity. So power consumption. So I prefer to look at it at the power consumption per cubic meter. Because that's more, more accurate in my mind because it also takes into account the diameter of the cutter head and obviously uh, you know the, the amount of material that you're removing from uh, the actual machine so it's going to range from 42.1 kilowatt hours per meters cube which isn't too bad that's slightly under um, a model 3 so i think a model 3 is either 55 or 58 um, and you've got 49.9 kilowatt hours for quite tough uh, conditions there so what about one mile what about if you wanted to do one mile uh, over the course of let's say four or five days maybe a week so that's 21,098 uh, cubic meters uh, or to excavate those cubic meters would be 970 megawatt hours so that's megawatt hours that is bonkers absolutely bonkers but that is the amount of electricity that a typical uh, is a lot less than a typical tbm would consume so it's a lot of electricity what about if we're trying to be a bit more realistic and say what about a thousand cubic meters in a day well that would be 42 megawatt hours which seems a lot more reasonable uh or if we're going to actually kind of um give you a visualization of what this would be be 198 tesla power packs so each tesla power pack the ones that they currently sell are 232 kilowatt hours so it's almost 200 power packs if you imagine those lined up that would get you a thousand cubic meters but of course proof rock is going to do a lot more than a thousand cubic meters per day so if proof rock for example did 150 meters of tunnel in a day, that would require 390 power packs, so Tesla power packs, to complete those 150 meters. And it would probably do that over a 20 hour period. So it's not impossible. I think it can be done. However, at this moment in time, uh, my opinion is that powering uh, a TBM with batteries is not really worth the effort. Now, it can be done. Maybe my mind can be changed. But at this very moment in time, I think having a direct connection to the grid, you know, a high voltage connection, that probably is the better way of powering your TBM. Maybe I could be convinced otherwise, but... Uh, I think at this moment in time, it's fairly close, but I would say I prefer the direct power method via the grid. So that's the conclusion of today's video. I really hope you liked it. Please discuss these numbers in the comments below. If you're not sure where I've got you know, some of these numbers from, please tell me and I will hopefully be able to explain it to you. Okay, I just want to thank all my Patreons. Thank you so much. You're really doing a great job supporting this channel. I'm really sorry I've not been very active recently. Uh, unfortunately, I had a few things I've needed to deal with uh, and my time has been fairly limited, but I will start to produce much more uh, videos per week now that I have kind of resolved my issue slash issues. <laughs> okay, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, great guys. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the video. Consider joining me on Twitter, Instagram and uh, Discord. Really hope you enjoyed that video and it you know, kind of informed you a bit more of the power
consumption requirements of a TBM, even a very, very efficient TBM like Proofrock, is going to require an absolute monumental amount of power. And uh, hopefully that can be improved over time. But at this moment in time, I think it should be powered directly via the grid. Thank you so much. If you disagree with me, tell me in the comments below. Thank you for joining me. And remember, don't be boring. I will see you all on the next one. Have a good one, guys. Thank you and goodbye. Wow! This is Sparta!